It's reaction time, Steve Richards, and the three types of closes he teaches to car salesmen. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the homework guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Today, you get the special treat of hearing Elizabeth's take on these closes. Before we start, as many of you are aware, good old Steve didn't really appreciate that we had been reviewing his content, saying that we were out of content. No, we have like, what, a dozen videos in process at any given time. If some of you thought a reaction video was being a little tough on the old guy, let me explain why we thought it was so essential and appropriate. We represent car buyers. We don't have to BS anyone on anything. Steve, on the other hand, represents car dealers. And I think you have a clue where that leaves him at. Think about it. If you played any game, any type of sport, for example, why wouldn't you want to analyze the opponent's playbook? Well, of course you would. Only a fool would say no. That said, on the video Steve produced objecting to our reactions, he said in the end, you be the judge. So out of professional courtesy and because we only want to do shows that our audience wants and appreciates, we honored that. So the you be the judge turned into a poll and we did this on our community page. Here it is. Nearly 800 people voted. And I have to tell you, I had already made a mental note that if this number wasn't overwhelming, that at least 75% of you wanted more reactions, that we were just going to leave the old salesman playbook alone. However, to our surprise, 92% of you want more because you guys see the wisdom in studying sales training. So with you being the judge and 92% of you being on board with us, here's our take on Steve Richards' three types of closes. By the way, real quickly before we roll, is there anything you want to say about any comments Steve made with regard to you on this video? No, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you trust a salesman or his judgment of you, then I guess you're in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. So here's Steve trying to justify the price of the vehicle without going into any negotiations. Check it out. All right. This video demonstrates how to handle a customer who is getting a huge discount already. Um, the vehicle's been discounted. In this case, it's a uh, Silverado truck. It's been discounted thousands of dollars. Chevrolet is discounting it an additional $4,000. But the customer is doing what they've always done. Uh, they, they like the truck, but now they're trying to work the salesman for a better deal. Something you should do every single time, by the way. So this isn't unusual. It's been done for years, should always be done. And regardless of what any dealer says about like their first price is their best price, always negotiate. In this particular case, as in many of the cases these days, there's no more There's no more room. The dealer had to deeply discount the vehicle. The no more room, you guys are sitting in multi-million dollar facilities and around guys that are making, like Andy Elliott bragging about making $700,000 a year selling cars and $2 million a year as a uh, part of the management team. But they're losing money. But they're losing money. So keep saying like there's no money in these deals. Look around you. Only a fool would think that was the case. It's kind of like being at a casino. If you think the house loses all this money to these all these huge winners, um, you need to think again. To attract the customer in the first place. But the customer doesn't know how the pricing models changed. In this particular scenario... Do you want to say anything about this word change? Because Steve uses this a lot. He talks about a lot about how the car business has changed. Um, has anything that Steve is doing changed? Nothing has changed. Maybe he's upped his own game, but it's the same game they've been playing for 20 or 30 years. The words that he uses, you can literally watch his videos going back for years and they'll be identical. The, yeah, the, the word tracks are the same. The word tracks are exactly the same. Rather than negotiate with the customer, I'm going to use three different price justifications. The first price justification I'm going to use is the market-based price negotiation. The second is the uh, package and options and accessories uh, strategy, which should demonstrate to the consumer, I mean, they're getting a heck of a deal anyway. And thirdly, I'm going to go into my value proposition. I'm going to do this every time before I ever negotiate because... It says on the screen there, justify, don't negotiate. Mm -hmm. So that's the new tactic, you guys. In most cases, there's nothing else to negotiate. Consumers don't recognize a good deal when they see it because of all the tricks dealers have played on, on them in the past. <laughs> yeah. It's not the consumer's fault. Right. It's, um, it's our fault. Hey, look at that. There he is pointing the finger at himself. You're right. Nailed it right on the head. Couldn't agree more. In the business. But now 
we've got to the point where we need to learn to justify, we need to learn to be persistent. You can't let your salesperson look at the customer and say, well, gee, I'll be right back and go visit the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz is actually vocabulary that you acquire when you're in the car business long enough. They use a lot of like really strange things to, to especially like when they really take advantage of a person, they'll say, we rip their head off. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that pretty gross? Yeah. But but that's what they say, you know, when they really screw a customer over. And those rip your head off deals are the ones that get praised on Saturday morning sales meetings. All right. So have some fun with, with this. Uh, watch it. These are three great justifications. They're honest, above board, completely accurate, and the consumer will buy it if your sales team can communicate it effectively and confidently. Pay close attention to what he just said. If I don't want to buy it. <laughs> if, if your sales team can communicate it effectively and confidently. He didn't say if they can communicate it fairly, honestly, honestly and transparently. transparently. I mean, like, how many deals did we do? I mean, a ton of them that we've done where we've shared all the information with the customer so they, they could actually look at the information and see that it was a fair deal. And the customer is like, let's do it. Just, just like that. There wasn't any further conversation or whatever. It was just making it transparent so that it was easy for the customer to tell that the deal was fair and honest. And they're just like, let's do it. There wasn't any more of this conversation that Steve's going to go through with this customer because he's avoiding being fair and honest and, of course, being transparent. Hey, Steve. So, I mean, I like the truck and I want to take delivery of this truck today. I just want to know, can we do better on that 44.6? Hey, really quickly so that you know. This is a car salesman giving Steve objections and he's showing the salespeople how to deal with them. So this isn't a live situation with Steve and a customer. It's Steve and a salesperson. But the reason why you need to know about it, because that salesperson in turn is going to do this to you. <laughs> you know, the fact that you want me to drop my price is evidence that you're a perfectly normal human being. Boy, I've heard that um, before. This is not your first rodeo. You bought trucks before, correct? What he said, the fact that you want me to drop my, is like, Oh, what? <laughs> it always makes me laugh when I hear that line out of him about you. Seriously, go back and watch a whole bunch of Steve Richards videos. That's the first thing he says out of his mouth. Oh, the fact that you want me to drop my price. You know, you're a perfectly normal human being. See, I can say it. I've heard him say it so many times. I can recite it. Uh, how, how long ago was it that you bought? By the way, what was that? When he said, you know, you're a perfectly normal human being and I'd be surprised if he didn't do this. What was that? Oh, he's validating. He's trying to make it seem like we're buddy, buddy. I understand you. And therefore, everything I say after this, you're going to buy into. You're going to think he gets you. Yep. Your last truck. Uh, it would have been 2017. Okay. Uh, I'm going to guess that in order to get a good deal on that truck, you had to go back and forth with a salesman to get the best deal you possibly could. Sure. And that's what you want to do right now. Sure. All right. Um, things have changed. Things Nothing have changed. changed. <laughs> things have changed. You be the judge of how much things have changed when you hear this. Austin, um, and all the changes that have taken place since 2017 are good for the consumer. Good, good for you. I do agree with that. A, a lot of things that have happened relative to information and even the rapid growth of homework guy videos has all been to the benefit of the consumer. So tons of information like us available on the web. And that has been to the good of the consumer doesn't mean that the dealership itself has changed anything, but yes, a lot of great changes for the benefit of the consumer, including the growth of the homework guy channel. The massive movement to online shopping has literally changed the way dealers price their trucks. Shoot, we don't even price them. Software prices them. Look, in order to attract the software pricing it, he's been actually saying that for a long time. Shoot, we don't even price our cars. The software does it. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I've seen these sales managers and the management team work on the pricing of their vehicles. And yeah, they're paying attention to what's going on in the auto auction and everything like that and, and what's out there. But that is very largely a manual process and them just trying to jockey around and beat the other dealers up. In fact, by the way, um, we, we may, he may touch on this at whatever point, but the fact that uh, car sales trainers like Steve and other people in the car dealer business talk about the homework guy beating up on dealers and making dealers look bad and sound bad and stuff like that, go into a dealer one time, anywhere, 
and say that you were at another dealer. And what is that dealer going to tell you about the other dealer? Oh, they're slime balls or scumbags. Can't believe you went there and they have the worst prices ever. It just one thing after another. And we don't do stuff like those guys do. Yeah. You know, we, we, we aren't here to screw <laughs> you over like they are. They'll throw literally every dealer in their community and anywhere you went to go shop, they'll throw every one of them under the bus and, and tell you the worst horror stories, stories you haven't even heard here on this channel. They'll tell you those kinds of stories, that that's how much they trust each other. Thank you today. We had to deeply discount this vehicle <laughs> and then Chevrolet had to throw in another $4,000. Yep. If this price hadn't been attractive on the That was internet, just a rebate. You, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, would we? Sure. Of course not. You're doing what you've always done because the dealer's first price was never the best one. Hey, things have changed. What you had to fight... Again, things have changed. Dealer's first price was never the best price. That's still true. For in the past, Austin, you are now served up on a silver platter. In fact, it's served up to you at home or at your office. What is Steve serving up on a silver platter here? Can I say it on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys know what he's serving up on a silver platter. Because if we don't serve up a deeply discounted price to you before you get here, you don't get here. Our phones don't ring. Email inboxes don't fill up. Nobody shows up. What you had to fight for in the past, you got before you ever set foot on this property. You were a winner before you ever set foot on this property. So there's some validity in what he's saying here because with all of the online information, dealers are jockeying all the time to draw people into the dealership. And we know from the comments you make on our channel and a lot of interactions that we have with dealers, even car buyers like yourself, that price is a really big deal. So they're jockeying all the time to try to beat other dealers on price. But that doesn't mean the negotiations are done now because the dealers themselves are busy beating each other up. The fact that you're asking for an additional discount, I understand it completely. You don't need to do that anymore. I promise you absolutely have to do this. Absolutely. You something about an hour and a half ago, and I am not going to break that promise. I told you this would be a pleasant. What, what did you just long, say? It was an hour. And, there's, a, there's been an hour and a half of this stuff going on. Yeah. Hour and a half ago. Woof. So when he's talking about how fast this is, and this will be your best buying experience. He just made reference to 90 minutes ago when this conversation starts. Experience, have we had a pretty good time? 100%. I told you this, this would be the fastest purchase experience of your life. The fastest one of your life, 90 minutes. Correct? So far so good. You're slowing us down. I need you <laughs> right. <laughs> Ouch. You're slowing us down. You know, lines like that, I mean, there's like so much, you know, just really out of touch, normal human kind of interactions that you hear from car salesmen. Like somebody just shared the other day that uh, a, a guy said, I'm going to think about it. And so he's getting ready to leave. And the salesman goes, what, aren't you mad enough to make a decision without your wife? Like what kind of a human being makes that comment to anybody? But this is the kind of stuff they say. That all made sense, Steve, and I, I get it. I, I just, I think that you guys could do better. Okay. I, I do. Okay. Uh, I get it. I get it. And you know what? All right. So now here comes the close based on package options and accessories. I call this the trinkets <laughs> close because yeah. a lot of this stuff that the dealer is throwing into this package that looks like value is largely fluff. If they buy a car themselves, shoot, they don't put this kind of junk on their car and they don't buy the finance guy's products they don't pay the finance guys fees they don't put any of this kind of stuff so i call this the trinkets close instead of the package options and accessories close because what he's proposing really doesn't have any value to me and doesn't have a lot of value to most car buyers if you want a lower price on a silverado i can do that that's not a problem but you told me in fact you've been telling so far, me for two like hours problem. and then i would go through everything this this truck has Okay, I obviously don't know the product. I would say, you said it had to have this. You said it had to have that. You said it had to have this. Are all those things still important to you, Austin? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so we picked out the perfect truck. I think so. Okay, I, I look, I can find a lower price on a different truck. I would not do that to you. So what he's saying is because it has um, floor mats and like the retractable mirrors and maybe a rear 
a rear camera, just those special things. Pinstriping and mud flaps. Pinstriping and mud flaps. <laughs> He's telling the customer that because you want the extra things you need to pay extra, he's just not willing to divulge the exact amount, which is actually on the car invoice directly from the manufacturer. So he could actually be showing this to the customer, but he chooses to just justify and validate instead. And many of these things that are put on the vehicle are actually put on at the dealer, not at the manufacturer. So right. in many cases, when the dealer is saying that these are stuff put on at the factory, you know, we can't take them off. Most of the time that's BS. In fact, I challenge you as car buyers, pick up the phone and call the manufacturer, tell them what dealer you're at and what things they claim are on the vehicle from the factory. And I'll tell you what, that dealer can get in some really deep doo-doo with the manufacturer making bogus claims like that. I'm not saying Steve is making these claims here in this video, but I'm saying car salespeople do it all the time and claim that it's a manufacturer install when in fact it's I need not. your okay right here and right here. Now, I get that this has all the features and we can step off. There went the throw the paper across the table, hand you the pen. pencil. And I could lose those, lose those features, but I don't want to lose those features, and I want a better price. Okay, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Um. If you always notice, his paper is always folded. When we talk about transparency, what is the transparent person? What do they do? They show you everything that you want to know. They just put it out there on the table because you're supposed to be talking about all the information. He closes the paper up because he doesn't want you looking at the numbers. He wants you listening to what he's saying. Now, remember, anything that has any validity is always in writing. Now, I'm not saying his piece of paper that he's been scribbling on has any validity, but I'm just saying it's always in writing. So no matter what the salesman says to you, it doesn't matter if it's Steve Richards or any person you encounter on any car lot, no matter what they say to you, always have the claims in writing because that's the only thing that's going to matter when it's all said and done. Two things that I want you to remember, all right? Number one, no other Silverado around here comes with a 10-year, 200,000-mile powertrain warranty. Good anywhere in the United States or Canada with a small deductible coverage on all the internally lubricated parts of your, of your powertrain plus <laughs> seals and gaskets plus taxes and fluids, all right? Wait, did somebody slow that down? Kevin. <laughs> that was... That was pretty funny. That's one thing. But the best thing about this whole thing is you don't need to waste any more of your time because what we can do is I'm going to get this truck ready for delivery and then I want you to spend, when you get home, oh boy. if you so desire, the next 120 hours trying to find the same truck on another website, which you'll be able to. Doesn't this sound a little bit like sign it and then you can find out if you got a good deal or not it seems backwards kevin i mean shoot we all carry the same inventory you'll be able to find the same truck on any one of five thousand different Bob going. chevrolet dealership websites and if you find the same truck advertised for a lower price anywhere in the usa and it comes with the same benefits we offer you just give old Steve a call <laughs> and say, Steve, here it is. Here's the website address. I'll look it up and I'll just bring you down here, buy you lunch and give you a check for the difference. As wow. If. That's not in writing, Kevin. That's not in writing. Again, that's, that's what the promise. salesman says. None of that will be backed up. Make him put that kind of stuff in writing. And if a salesperson ever says that, just say, you know what? Go ahead and write that up in a legal document. Let's take a look at it. But. You shouldn't ever take this kind of a, a situation where you're signing a deal, driving it away. You're, you're sitting at home doing your after the fact homework when homework is always done in advance. You ever hear anybody, I mean, th this is such a dumb thing to do. I mean, to just use the analogy, I'm assuming we have college students in our audiences as well because we hear from plenty of you. So think if you went and took the test and then you went home and studied. And after you studied and realized that there was a bunch of things you got wrong, you went back to the teacher and said, you know what? Um, I want to fix a number of my answers because I know I really screwed up. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And it definitely isn't going to happen on your car deal either. Wrong. Do the homework first. Fix it. So here's the thing that I'd say about this is that if Steve is totally comfortable that he has the best deal, the best price, the best truck, send the guy home. Have him use his... 120 hours and do all of his research come back four or five days later a week later whatever and sign the deal then send him home make him go do his homework and have him come back because he's going to find out that if you do indeed have the best deal that he very convincingly is saying that he has 
done deal. Customer goes and does a homework, comes back, signs out on the truck. That easy. Okay, because you got a best value guarantee. You. I told you you couldn't pay too much for a truck at Premier. You cannot. Now, quit wasting your time. Okay, <laughs> this right here. <laughs> That's that's a lot of arrogance, isn't it? Could you imagine anyone talking to a customer like this? Quit wasting your time and sign this paper right here. I'd say, okay, and just hop out of my chair and leave. <laughs> I would have stopped wasting his time, you know, about 30 or 60 seconds into it because I just said, listen, buddy, we're going to get right down to the brass tacks, the out-the-door price, or there's not even going to be a conversation. So, yeah, yep. I, I would have saved him a whole bunch of time. <laughs> see, see, the, see, me, see the, these are justifications. Right. I mean, I, I, we'll I want to stop real quick here because what happened before was his training leading up to it. But he does a lot of this salesman banter on the end of the video. So while I'm inclined to stop here, there's only a couple of minutes left of this. Let's see what the interaction is with the staff that he's sitting with. What you were doing is, is, is old-fashioned negotiation. Right, right. And by golly, if that doesn't work, then I have to do that. Yeah, right. and I, I'd love to tell you I can get a customer to buy everything I got to say. That's, that's bullshit. Right. <laughs> he actually said the word. He said it on YouTube, not me. Yes. I go, but I, I'm going to go through multiple justifications. Is that what you were referring to was on the silver platter? Earlier? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> before I ever negotiate a penny of profit away because look have we discounted ever living shit out of this truck already wow. yeah do we deserve to make some money when we sell a truck or a car the answer is yes we do what's it cost we agree with that totally totally they deserve to make money on it so throw all the numbers on the table and let the customer be the judge of that run this place don't answer the question I already know it's a lot he just asked the Probably the owner or general manager, a, a level of management is sitting down the table to Steve's left and he asks the guy, how much does it cost to run this place? There's a little clue, guys. When you're looking around this multi-million dollar facility, which, yes, costs an arm and a leg to run, they aren't losing money on your car deal. Doesn't happen. It's a lot. But more importantly, in order for you to make the kind of money you want to make in order for you to make the kind of money you want to make we have to make some money on the vehicles that we sell a customer is going to do exactly what austin did a customer's going to customer's going to do exactly what vince did a customer's going to do exactly what i did come on you can do better you can do better yeah they're going to use this question like is that the best you can do <laughs> <laughs> and you could do better and uh i want to think about it make sure you use that a lot and then get up and leave because they're used to doing it. It's the way we taught them. You can blame me for that. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, Steve. We blame you for that. 40 years counting here. It was the way I was trained to do it. Yeah. I was trained to bring out a worksheet and go, hey, what do you say? What do you think? Yeah. So is he training other people to do it differently? No, nope, it's the same stuff. Same old stuff, different choices of words, but just the same old stuff. It's a, it's a really kind of sad thing. You know, when we talk about, you know, getting outside your comfort zone and learning how to think outside the box a little bit, salespeople, the longer they're in this process, their capabilities of thinking about anything other than what they've been doing for all these years um, becomes next to impossible. I mean, they almost can't be rehabilitated to do something else. If they became a career counselor for somebody, you know, sitting in an office where they're just talking, to, they would fill the person full of BS, line after line after line, I'm trying to push them into one kind of job or the other. It's, it's just what they're used to doing. They don't know anything other than the new truth that they've created for themselves. Say, say no, do better. No, back. <laughs> okay. And then I'd run back, to, I'd run back to the sales desk and then say, wait, repencil the deal. We're gonna to get to the point very soon, guys, where you're not gonna be able to go back to the desk. We're, 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 our, we're, our, our, our pricing has got to be so aggressive to attract people today we cannot negotiate anything else away there's a certain amount of truth to uh, pricing on cars becoming more and more competitive although right now cr prices of cars are just way through the stinking roof dealers are making a killing off of every car they're selling right now that's that's just where the pricing market has gone but there's more and more information on pricing and that's the reason why you guys have to be so diligent you have to practice due diligence because while it's very competitive when it comes to pricing, once you get to the finance office, what's going to happen there, Liz? Oh, they're going to try to sell you fees and products and warranties and things you don't actually need. So they're still padding their pockets 
after they are losing money. <laughs> right. And by the way, what he's doing is proacting to the objection, which is not smart. It's really, really smart. Yeah. All right, we're going to end it there because it is very brilliant smart to negotiate and do it proactively. So, yeah, it's not just smart. It's brilliant smart, and all of you should be doing it as well. Anything else you want to add to this, Liz? Uh, nope, I think that sums it up. All right, okay. let's wrap it up. If you appreciated our reaction video today, consider giving that, us that great big thumbs up and comment down below. Uh, please include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. But if you really want to help us and you want to increase your good luck on your next car deal, help us get the word out, share our content with others and encourage them to subscribe too. Absolutely. Help us get to a million subscribers and by doing so, you're helping bring fairness and honesty to the car business. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here today with the amazing Elizabeth, making better students out of all these great car buyers that we have out there. Thanks everyone for joining us.